Welcome back. We previously said that gender-based violence is a human rights violation. Let us focus a bit more on discussing gender-based violence in the context of human rights. People usually do not think about their human rights very often, but they do think about them when they feel their human rights were violated. Human rights have a dual nature. On one hand, they are legal provisions, which can be found in international and national legal instruments, like conventions, charters, or constitution. On the other hand, they are values that are the basis for people to live their lives in dignity, such as non-discrimination, equality, social justice, or solidarity. Human rights are not something utopist or some super special privileges. They are rather minimal standards for all people to live their lives in dignity. People who experience gender-based violence may suffer from different human rights violations and abuses. Their right to life may be violated, freedom from torture and degrading treatment, freedom from discrimination, or right to safety and security. They often do not have the right to shelter, a safe space to run away from the abuser. The right to privacy might be violated. And some of them find it difficult to look for solutions in the courts. The European Convention on Human Rights, which reaffirms human rights included in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, forbids discrimination on any ground, including sex. You can find it in Article 14. Protocol 12 to the Convention reaffirms the principle of non-discrimination. Actually, Article 1 reiterates that the enjoyments of rights set forth by law shall be secured without discrimination on any ground, including sex. The Convention stipulates that private and family life should be protected in Article 8. People of marriageable age should have the right to marriage. You can find it in Article 12. And that spouses should have equal rights in marriage. The Convention has a strong and well-known enforcement mechanism, the European Court of Human Rights. The Court receives individual as well as state versus state complaints. In addition, the European Social Charter the counterpart to the European Convention of Human Rights in the field of economic and social rights, guarantees the enjoyment of rights in the areas of housing, health, education, employment, legal and social protection, and movement of, her, of persons. All the rights must be implemented without discrimination on any ground, in particular on the ground of sex. The Charter was revised in 1996 and provides for equality between women and men from the perspective of education, work and family life, and for positive measures in order to ensure equal opportunities and the right to equal remuneration. There are other documents as well, we can mention a lot. For example, the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, sometimes called CEDAW. The Convention prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. Countries that signed and ratified the Convention are obliged to adopt all necessary measures to ensure that women enjoy equality with men, meaning that they should adopt necessary legislation combating discrimination and advancing women's rights. One of the latest developments in the area of human rights is the Council of Europe Convention on the Protection of Children Against Sexual Exploitation and Sexual Abuse. It's known as Lanzarote Convention. According to the Convention, states in Europe and beyond should develop legislation to criminalize all sexual exploitation and abuse against children and take concrete measures with the emphasis on keeping the best interest of children. Another document uh, the Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, known as Istanbul Convention, adopted by the Committee of Ministers and open for signatures in Istanbul 
on May 11, 2011, recognizes gender-based violence against women as a violation of human rights and a form of discrimination. You actually will be able to get to know more about the Convention and the approaches it uses in the next part of the course. We will talk about it more. We could enumerate other instruments, as there are actually many, um, such as the Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings, or another one, the Vienna Declaration on the Elimination of Violence Against Women. In 2016, the United Nations Secretary General appointed the independent expert on sexual orientation and gender identity. The mandate of the expert is to assess the implementation of existing international human rights instrument with regard to ways to overcome violence and discrimination against persons on the basis of their sexual orientation or gender identity. His mandate also includes identifying and addressing the root causes of violence and discrimination. But legal measures are not enough to prevent and act against gender-based violence. Human rights education has a crucial role here to play. Only when people know what human rights they have, and they also have skills to be able to protect themselves and others, there is a chance to end or at least minimize the abuse of people who are targeted with gender-based violence.